Welcome to the Bearded Outdoors podcast. I'm your host and co-owner of Bearded Outdoors, Reese Richards. This podcast is going to be just like you're sitting on your grandpa's tailgate. We're going to be talking about everything faith, beards, and the great outdoors. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. We really hope you enjoy and continue to do better and be better. God bless. What's up, guys? This is Reese Richards, uh, owner of Bearded Outdoors. This is the fifth episode of the Bearded Outdoors podcast, and we have a very special guest uh, today with us. Um, Dude I look up to uh, in the outdoors a little bit, has an awesome beard. Um, It's the one and only Sean Lundy of Drury Outdoors. How are you today, Sean? Good, man. I appreciate the kind words, buddy. Yeah, 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 no worries, man. I mean, you, you're sporting it, sporting it. Um, yeah, man, so I uh, I just got back from Georgia, so I was going to get this episode recorded with you. Um, I know we talked. Where did you go? Did you go anywhere this weekend to hunt? No, no, I, I just stayed local with the munchkins. We had that cold front come in. and Oh, yeah. Oh, man, we trying to get my son to get it done with the bow and a couple close encounters, but uh, yeah. I tried with sports and stuff, the uh, daylight savings time coming soon. He, he knows it's usually right after school he'll go, but he loses that hour once uh, school starts. So we're trying to get as much in as possible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. Um, so uh, basically we had a short phone – well, it was going to be a short phone conversation last week, and uh, that was actually – turned out to be an awesome phone conversation to tell you the truth <laughs> we should have recorded it <laughs> i know <laughs> it would have been a great episode <laughs> yeah yeah i was telling my wife i was like man we were talking and i was like you know halfway through you mentioned recording it and i was like yeah that would have been nice i mean we have we had some pretty similar not similar stories personally but like just the the lifestyle in a sense of yeah yeah was, how we was, started and everything yeah, like that crazy yeah so um how Let's let's start by how did you hunt growing up? I know you said you grew up in New York. So how mm-hmm. was that hunting? Um, I think it was pretty similar to how I hunted in Allen Park, but how did that start out? It was it was different hunting and you know, I'm pretty blessed to be out in the Midwest now where Yes, you know, like I said before, me and my son have been grinding it out all weekend. The last few weekends, actually trying to get it done. But we've been seeing deer, having encounters. And, and basically, when I mean deer, just, just any deer. You know, he's just trying to harvest his first deer with the bow and stuff. He's yeah. harvested many before. But when I was in New York, I've always said that to my son, too. I said, you know, what? one of these days, I'm going to take you back so he can hunt with my dad, his pop-up. I said, and I'm going to let you hunt out east. And you are really going to appreciate the Midwest, yeah. You know, and yeah. like I grew up on Long Island, so which Long Island's got some great hunting now, but you know, you go back, I'm 43 now, so you go back, heck, you know, 30, 30 something years, you know, when I was 10, 11, 12 years old hunting, we didn't really hunt as much on Long Island at that time. We would do some pheasant hunting and some put takes, yeah. but we'd have to go up to the, to the mountains of the Catskills and the Adirondacks and stuff. So you would travel three, four hours, you you know, you get up there. Um, which really wasn't much travel compared to what we do now sometimes. But, you know, as a kid, that was a, that seemed like a long trip. And with, <laughs> yeah. sh- with school, most of the time, you, you had to do it, like, during Thanksgiving break. But, you know, hunting back, back then, you, you you sat on a rock and you kind of ju- you just waited, you know, and you, you actually, you know, would find the sign and stuff like that up in that, in that area. It's a lot of timber, a lot of deep, deep forest, yeah. which is something I'm not used to, you know, when I came out here and you got a lot of agriculture and everything but when i see people that are just outside like some of the cities and i don't mean like we weren't two minutes out of new york city but you know just a few hours away when these guys on the east coast and some of these other areas when they go out there and they harp they've done something yeah you know and it's one of those challenges like us in the midwest it's you know you, you see a lot of these guys on the east coast and stuff and they're hunting and it's it's like, oh, man, you know, some people look at it like, well, you know, these guys harvested this deer or they shot a 100-inch deer, 105-inch deer, man. Well, why aren't they waiting? That is a 
<laughs> heck of a deer. You, you know, they yeah. don't understand. Like, if if you switched it, I think the East Coast guys would really, you know, shock a lot it. of people to see how well they would do in the Midwest. Yeah. Compared to how Midwestern hunters their whole life, you stick them on the East Coast. And it's. I think they would just have a little more respect on, you know, where some of these guys have cut their teeth. You know, I mean, oh, yeah. it's truly a grind out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is in Florida a little bit. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, talk about Florida hunting and stuff. And, you know, I grew up in Michigan and uh, that kind of hunting is similar to how, how you hunted. And, yeah. Um, coming to florida you know people are saying oh it's a different breed it's hard and all this stuff and you know until i started grinding out and trying to you know trying to find those hundred plus inch bucks and trying to you know get these deer that actually have meat on their bones and stuff i mean it's a florida is like a different breed just like you know out west compared to compared to the east but where are you residing now uh i'm in northeast indiana Northeast Indiana. So pretty oh. much one county from Ohio, one county from Michigan, right in the upper northeast corner. Okay, heck yeah. And we've got we've got good, you know, great hunting here, and I mean, phenomenal. It's you know, some of the people you know, they, you look and you look at Illinois, Iowa, you know, even Ohio and stuff like that, Nebraska. It's you know, I wouldn't say that that hunting's better there. It's just that you know, it's a lot easier. I would say you don't have a county road every square mile, you know, so yeah. it's a lot easier for that deer to make it to that three, four, five year old age class, you know. That's true. Yeah. You know, so where we're from, people are, you know, well, all they ever see around here is like a 130, 140, which don't don't let a 130, 140 <laughs> walk past me because I'm letting it fly. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, but it's yeah. a lot of that's to do with age structure, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, so where have you, uh, have you hunted, where have you hunted this year so far? Uh, this year I went up to Wisconsin. It was last week or the week before for a few days. Um, beautiful country up there, the rolling bluffs and stuff like that. But it's, you know, it, it the temperatures, it was just, you know, mid to high eighties, which in Florida, oh, you're yeah. probably used to stuff like that. You know, it's, yeah. but and, yeah, the deer move because, here, man, the deer move here, whether it's 95 or 45, it's it, obviously they're going to move. Actually, that thing, yep. I think they move a little later in the morning when it's 40, when that first cold front comes in, you, you're seeing them starting to move at nine o'clock because I, I really think they're sitting there like, dang, this is pretty cold. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I've hunted several times, you know, down in Texas and Oklahoma and when I first started hunting down there. You know, it's the same thing. I'm like, yeah. man, it's like 75, 80 degrees. I'm like, man, this is horrible. Yeah. Everyone down there is getting excited. I'm like, we, they're like, they're, they're, they got to eat. You know, they're used to this stuff. They're going to move. Oh, you yeah. know, and it was. It was definitely, they, they got on their feet and they were moving and the hunting's phenomenal. Um, definitely a more target-rich environment down there. And a lot of it is because of, you know, there's not as much agriculture and stuff where they can kind of disappear to. You know, if right. you've got a food plot down there or supplemental feeding, it's you, you it becomes a very target rich environment you know exactly yeah the only i mean the only thing here in florida you have open open fields and then you have you know crops but most of the crops here in florida aren't something the deer truly love and then you know you have the hardwoods that drop acorns so the deer you know we see our deer eating briars and all kinds of stuff in florida like it surprises the crap out of you <laughs> but you know that's how it, it gets too and um it, it's amazing when when food does, you know, start to run out and stuff like that, the, the things that they will turn and start to eat, and, you know, deer mm-hmm. will eat cedar, you know, and deer will eat certain types of pines and stuff like that when, when there's nothing else left to eat. So yeah. you really notice it in the hard winters when you look at the browse line on just, you know, driving down the road, you know, the different, you, you, you look at it and you have a lot of your evergreens or, or some of your trees that just hold greens, not necessarily an evergreen tree. Right. But, then you go by February and March and you can actually see about that five, six foot up the whole wood starting to disappear. And it's just, yeah. it's what they can reach. You know, it's the only thing they've got left. Yeah. 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 That's, that's definitely a, a serious thing for sure. So let's, um, let's talk a little bit about what I, you know, growing up kind of watching jury, um, and seeing some episodes of, uh, you know, mentioning you and stuff. So what I didn't know if you want to talk about this, that's fine. But yeah. about the whole 
um, your career and how for a certain amount of years that your face was never on camera and you were doing mostly behind the scenes. Tell us about that because that was pretty interesting to me. And that, yeah, I... that tied into basically my dad and how his life is. Too. Yeah, it was kind of a crazy little story. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm like a lot of us out there. I mean, we watch the outdoor channel and hunting shows and stuff your whole life. And I used to watch the DVDs for the Drury's and Primos and all of them back in the day when they all first came out. Mm -hmm. But a while back, I actually got on and I, I was always filming hunts, you know, just my own personal hunts just to have like, you know, just to have the memories and stuff and this crazy dream of someday being able to film hunts for somebody, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we all have those I dreams. Started, <laughs> so as soon as I got out, I actually just, um, I like I said, I was born and raised in Long Island. So I came to the point where I was getting ready to graduate and it was, okay, do you, do you go to college? And, you know, at that time, just piss all your money away and blow it or go to the military. And I just, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to the military. So I enlisted in the Marines Got out, and when I was in the Marines, I was, you meet different people throughout the entire United States, you know, and a lot of good oh, yeah. old country boys. And I would sit there and talking to these guys, it's like, well, heck, you know, I, you know, to me, they get home from work where they normally live and they talk about going hunting. And it's like, well, yeah, I'm a big hunter. I'm a big hunter, you know, and like, where do you go? And I'm like, well, I go hunting here or there and take me two, three hours. Well, it just blew my mind that these guys were like traveling down the road <laughs> and going hunting, you know, I'm like, yeah. wow, this is like a dream, you know? So I started you know on the weekends and stuff you would we literally would i don't know if people remember back in the day you can get a u-haul truck for 99 dollars for a week and it was unlimited mileage we would grab a u-haul truck stick two people up front stick a card table in the back five or six more marines shut the door we'd play cards and we would just go visit someone else's whenever we would get a 96 you know whenever we got a, a four days off yeah. we would just go visit somewhere else in the midwest you know we all chipped in and we went so I started, you know, going to like Ohio and different places, Oklahoma, Indiana. And I'm like, man, this is awesome. I told my parents, I'm like, you know, mom, dad, you know, if you guys think the hunt's good, because that's all we ever knew was New York and a little bit of Pennsylvania. I'm like, man, this hunt now West is crazy. Yeah. So my whole family was actually military, um, uh, you know, law enforcement. My brother to this day, he's, you know, he could retire, but he's going to do a few more years. He's an NYPD detective. So nice. I wanted to get involved in law enforcement, but I also wanted to hunt. You know? yeah. So <laughs> I, I said, listen, I'm going to get my foot in the door. So I moved to Indiana. I had a friend of mine here that I knew from the Marines. And I got my foot in the door in the correction part, working as like a prison guard and stuff like that. Yeah. That's when so my dad I, started. I yeah. yeah. It's just like, it's like a good like way to get your foot in the door. So I, I did that and a short time later after that. I was still hunting, but even more now, you know, just going crazy about it mm -hmm. so then i went ahead and i kept applying for the test and i got hired on as just a regular police officer for the county i was working in mm -hmm. so i kind of went from the corrections to regular law enforcement officer and then little by little i started to get involved and my numbers were looking good as far as making you know traffic stops and my drug arrests were were high and stuff like that so i then got pulled over into a task force of working undercover for the state of Indiana. Yeah. So I worked some, some local cases and stuff like that, still filming, but you know, then the hair started to get longer, which now it's short again, the beard started to come, which, and honestly, I was clean cut from the <laughs> day I was born to the day I left the military. Like, I mm -hmm. never had a mustache or cookie, nothing, you know? Yeah. So, I couldn't even grow a beard till I was 25. <laughs> so I was like, man, I don't know about this whole beard thing. And it just kind of, but I was working, you know, a lot of undercover at the time. Right. So yeah. a little bit later, I got pulled over into a federal task force where I was working a little bit more undercover there, but more bigger cases and stuff where you would work like informants and CIs and stuff. So towards a few years into that, I was still filming. I was at a couple of the hunting shows and stuff, and I ran into, you know, a couple of guys in the industry, you know, mm -hmm. to include some of the guys from Drury. So it was... You know, in the beginning, you're just kind of helping out, getting some tips, doing some filming. But then it was when Matt Drury got a hold of me and said, hey, listen, I don't know if this would affect your, you know, your job with your face. And I explained to him, I'm, I'm not really working as much undercover now. You know, I'm doing more, you know, 
little things and then flipping them into bigger cases. How long you know, ago like, is how long ago is that when when Matt got this a hold is of you? probably I'd say probably about six years ago, give or take. Oh, okay. So yeah, cause we're going on episode four, Critical Mass, a year before that. Yeah, about about six years ago. Gotcha. So he had me go ahead and I, uh, um, he said, hey, let's try to do a hunt. At the time, I didn't have a cameraman, so I felt self-filmed a turkey hunt down in southern Illinois. Um, me and my wife, we went and bought a, a small little piece of ground down there just for hunting ground. Yeah. And I ended up filming a, a turkey hunt down there. And I also talked to some of my supervisors, and I'm like, hey, can I somehow throw a twist into this? He kind of wants to showcase, you know, myself, a little bit of me being, you know, you know, real close, you know, with the Drew Outdoor guys and friends with them and the whole family stuff and just kind of showcase law enforcement. Because at that time, and even now, law enforcement, our Second Amendment, everything, it was, it was under attack, you know, mm-hmm. and... So he wanted to try to promote it in a positive way. So a lot of my supervisors, they were on board, you know, hey, you know, you can do this, but not include this. And so we ended up filming, um, and it's on YouTube now. It was actually, it uh, appeared on Drees, it's Winchester's Natural Born on the Sports News Channel about five, six years ago. And it was a uh, Task Force Turkey was the title on it. <laughs> well, we ended up, you know, doing that little episode and, and it went over pretty good. And then it was a little bit while after that, the dream season, um, they ended up replacing dream season with the show Critical Mass. So gotcha. they had an opening on that and kind of Matt gave me a call like mid season. He's like, Hey, if you can get, you know, you've, you've got one harvest done in Nebraska, you know, if you can get another one you know, done here or there, what do you think about being a cash member on um, critical mass and it was a no-brainer like you've got to be kidding me you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, so and it, it's all history from there so i've just been kind of grinding it out and living a dream so I, I still do work law enforcement i still involved with the narcotics division and stuff but just doing okay. a lot less undercover now so yeah. well i appreciate your service man i appreciate you know everything that, oh, thank that you. you're doing with that um so i bet a lot of guys who are listening to this probably want to hear any kind of tips or anything like so your involvement was just basically knowing this person getting introduced here getting introduced there is that nowadays your recommendation for anybody trying to i don't want to say get into the industry but let's say there's somebody that's you know loves filming but they want to take it a step further is it as simple as contacting somebody and saying hey do you have any openings like i don't how does that even work when it comes down to the outdoor channel and being with a company that is like do they you have to get a certain amount of harvest on camera a certain you know how does that work you know sometimes when it when it comes time to the shows and stuff like that i mean it's realistically it's you know and that's the one thing i love about drews you know yes they they, a lot of the guys on the team kill absolute slammers, you know, but they also showcase the children involved, the family aspect, you know, what yeah. some people don't, don't seem mediocre. I mean, realistically, I, you know, I, I joke about it a lot, but like I hands down and I, I harvest the smallest deer on the team yeah. every year, hands down. But, you know, it's, exactly. I, I try to keep, yeah. I try to keep it real because exactly. I, I'm not one of these big, you know, super hunters and stuff, you know, and I do miss and I do mess up and I, you know, it's hard for me to, I don't have where I can just, you know, hunt for four, five weeks straight and pass up, you know, when I get the opportunity, you know, and a lot of guys that are on juries now, a lot on these shows, they're the same way. And I think, you know, it's, they're taking their vacation, they're going out and they're just trying to harvest a mature animal, you know, not the, the biggest one out there, but and some well, you know, have better farms than others, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, and to get back to the, I guess the question is, I, realistically, you know, I was already filming. I, how I knew some of the people that were already in the industry was from networking a lot. And it wasn't just, you know, necessarily networking like on, I didn't even have a social media account, especially because of my job and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Until I, until I came on jury, so I didn't have a Facebook and I mean, Instagram and nothing. Yeah. So they actually set that up, you know. So, but I just, I would go to all the shows, whether it was, you know, any of the deer classics that you see throughout the, you know, the U.S. And I don't, I wouldn't travel to like, you know, five, six states away, you know. At times, right. though, you know, I've 
you know, go to the Pennsylvania show, the Illinois show, the Wisconsin show, things that, you know, I can hop in the car with my wife or some friends and just go out there just to just mingle. And, just, yeah. yeah. Just to be around with people. And you run into a lot of these people at these shows, you know, and yeah. little by little you find out, wow, you know, we might have a farm that's close to each other or we hunt somewhere close. And it wasn't something that just came overnight right? because I mean, you're looking at how long, I mean, I've been, you know, and a lot of the guys that are probably listening to the same thing. I mean, they just continue going to shows and they run into the same certain people. But right. my suggestion would be get out there. If you, if you enjoy filming, film, film everything, the, the most goofiest things you yeah. got <laughs> and put it on YouTube, put it on YouTube and share it on your social media platform. That's how a lot of people get noticed. You know, that yeah. they're sharing something and all of a sudden you have someone in the industry that starts liking something or, you know, yeah. and it's, it's not just a like, you know, they like, and they, they might leave a comment, you know, and it goes to show, Hey, it's sincere. And then you kind of right. network back and forth. I, I knew in the beginning, you know, when I would talk to some of the guys in the industry, be like, man, well, I responded back, but he hasn't responded back. You know, I'm thinking, you know, what the heck was it like a computer? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know, just, just so many people that, or sending messages and stuff like that. But I would, you know, content is the best thing to go out there and to get recognized. And anybody that follows me, like on Instagram, my content's not of killing big deer. I mean, most of the time it's sitting in the stand, missing stuff, cracking up, making jokes, (laughs) eating snacks, you know, just be yourself. Um, If you're into filming a little bit, you know, just do quick edits, you know, edit a couple of them, try to produce little small hunts, little, even if it's not a harvest, just something that's real, keep it real, put it out there and promote it, whether it's on social media, whether it's on YouTube. And, yeah. you know, I actually, first time I met Terry and he remembered it because I'm thinking, Oh, there's no way. But then he mentioned some of the comments I made on it. Mm. I, I wrote letters to these guys. I know it sounds like, you know, like a fanboy, but like oh, I wrote letters to these guys like 20 years ago. That's awesome. And I'm like, how the heck am I even going to get a hold of these guys? And I actually found the address. It was on the back of a, one of the DVDs, you know? Yeah. That's and I wrote a letter. It was nothing. I wrote a letter again, two, three years later, nothing. Then yeah. all of a sudden, I don't know if it was just, that goes to show me how real some of these people are. Yeah. It's obvious. They must've been at the office, this or that. And they just reached out and said, Hey, these are letters that come in. Good yeah. time to open a letter. And Terry hand wrote me a letter back, That's awesome. you know? It was years after that before I even ran into them again. But I guess yeah. just having faith, don't give up. Just keep doing it. Yeah, that's. it seems like it's like a double-edged sword nowadays. So it seems a lot easier to build that connection because I'm kind of the same way. You know, if I'll tag somebody in certain posts, um, you know, you start getting likes. And then when they start engaging with a little bit of comments, that's when I'll give it a little bit. And then I'll be like, you know what, I'm going to shoot them a message and just see if I can just get small talk because, you know, yeah. having just connections and that's, that's how I, you know, reached out to you. And that's, it's kind of one of them things where it's, everybody's tra- in it for the same reason, you know, everybody wants to i guess say be on tv but nowadays it's different nowadays you know the outdoor channel used to be the only thing you could go watch hunting and now you could literally pull up your phone on anything any social media and you're watching hunting shows whether it's youtube or instagram tv or you know and there used to be those 40 minute episodes and now like you were saying do one harvest quick no one nowadays has that vision to like sit there for 45 minutes and watch one yep. harvest. Like everybody will click out of that. So now it's like, I think they said the, the, um, the attention of their audience is like six seconds now. So every time you watch something, if it's not exciting within that first six seconds, most people turn it off. And I just started laughing. I'm like, this is insane. But it showed. I was putting out, you know, 20 minute episode and then i i have two episodes on our youtube channel and that was you know 2018 i had no experience with editing or nothing and i have two years now of content which includes like three harvests and or four harvests and a turkey harvest and that content's on my computer because i don't have the time to sit down and edit so i've been going through with some of my team members and uh you know picking out the guys that actually you know have always wanted to edit and learn how to do it and i have 
I have the skill to do it. I just don't have that time, you know, like a one and four year old to sit down and do it. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how I am. And I, I, I try and say, you know, film everything because you'll be going through an episode and you'll be like, man, I wish I had a video of me putting my boots on or something, you know, like just the simplest little thing, but filming everything is definitely where it's at. And the reaching out to people, you know, T-Bone, that was, uh, we were at the Lakeland, Lakeland Outdoor Expo and he happened to be one of the guests there all weekend. And we were already communicating a little bit on, on Instagram and stuff and messaging and he's just one of them guys. But when we were there, we had a Trump Pence hat that we created and he ended up buying 25 of them. (laughs) <laughs> and he ended up handing them out to his guys and stuff. And ever since that day, we just had this, you know, connection. I was just getting into, um, you know, being an archery tech and all that stuff. So yep. he threw me his digits and, you know, we've, I message him, I text him probably, you know, once a month or so just to see how he's doing and everything. And then I started the podcast and I was like, well, from networking, you know, I already have a few connections and you know, a few people I can get a hold of, a few people I would like to get a hold of, but it seems impossible. But nowadays, you know, it's like you said, that repetitiveness, you're not being annoying and it depends on the person, you know, and I've messaged people and haven't gotten anything back. And then all of a sudden, boom, all of a sudden, exactly. An open conversation. And it's like, oh, he wasn't ghosting me this whole time. This episode of the Bearded Outdoors podcast is sponsored by Cross Time Media. Cross Time Media is a content creation branch or shed of Bearded Outdoors USA. All content is created by Reese Richards, co-owner and field producer of Bearded Outdoors. We would love to work with you and are available for hire. Please contact us for inquiries via Facebook and Instagram at Cross Time Media, C-R-O-S-S-T-I-N-E. Thank you guys and God bless. Let's get back to the show. It's, it's amazing too. Like, and that's the one thing, like you'll learn sometimes that there may be people out there in the industry. And like, to me, I don't know. And, and I, I hope I'm not trying to, you know, bad mouth thing, but like, yeah, I don't really, you know, always want to not really consider myself in the industry because then I think that's when your drive disappears. When you, yeah. when you think you're, you're you don't want to think you've made it. No. And sense. when you look at it and everybody that's like, when I look at, my following that is just it blew up over the last few years Mm -hmm. and i look at it because you know some people are like well it's me they want to follow me well yes and no i try to look at like the only reason why i have the following is because of all those people that are following me you know what i'm saying so i mean naturally i can't reach out to down the people there's times i'll go through my direct messages i'm like oh my god this one was like a month and a half ago and i'll just you know get back and like it again and also they comment back and it's like Wow, man! You know, this guy's commented three or four times, and he's he's took he's took the time right. to talk personally about some of my posts in a positive way. You know, because you get people that say negative stuff, and you know, nowadays there's just no room for that. Just just move on to the next. You know, yeah. but when I'm like, man, this guy's made a comment, or, or or this lady's made a comment about whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you reach back out to them, and you may find out you guys got a lot in common. You know, right. there's there's been several times I've been down to, to film, and I didn't have a cameraman or something like that you know and it's it's i've had people that say hey i'm literally like two towns away and they just wanted to just share deer camp with myself and some of the other guys and right. you know they came down and they they ran a camera and after a you know few hours of just telling them hey let's try this let's try that i mean they, they they did a fine job you know right. yeah so well if you ever want to uh dude i chase some osceolas on some public land here in florida and that is a absolutely fun time there's a lot of friends that i have that are you know i could almost call them experts in calling these birds and we do you know i do it's funny because i tell a lot of people man i film everything i do a lot of filming every hunt i do i film and but in reality you don't see any of it because it's sitting on my computer and i'm sitting here like well i've been filming for two or three years really started getting into it last year and there are no new episodes, not even short episodes. Like I'm slacking big time, and the Lord just threw me into this podcast thing, and it's it's gotten me, you know, wanting to really get back to like I've been filming. Every, I just went to Georgia. I just got back today, and I actually 
I have the realest content that I just took, and I basically had two does in front of me. I went to... I've only been using a thumb release for about two years, and I went to pull back 17 yards. I pulled back on this doe, and I premature released, shot over her back. You can see my my uh, lighted knock sitting there. So her friend or, or whatever ran in a circle, stopped at about 35 yards, and um, I, it was right in between a V and a tree, and I tried to sneak it in there, and I saw my arrow did a flip because I have those lighted knocks. You can see when yep. something's not right. And that thing hit probably five feet away from her. I was like, what the heck's going on? So I get back to camp. I'm all upset at myself. And I noticed my rest is kicked like a quarter of an inch to the right. So I retuned my bow in between hunts and everything. Thankfully, a guy that was with us, a uh, buddy that was with us, had a bunch of stuff. I'm an archery tech, and I forgot all of my gear to bring. Yep. But, um, long story short, I redeemed myself that evening. I had a doe at 36 yards, and I sm- double lung smoked her. She jumped up about six feet in the air, and she was spewing blood out of her mouth and her side. Like she dropped probably oh, 20, 22 yards away, dude. And I'm like, this is insane. So I redeemed myself. But the reality is, this episode is going to be. I love teaching and knowledgeable episodes. You know, a quick. Here's seven minute video. I went out there. Everything's good. I shot this buck perfect here in 30 yards. Yay. This episode's going to be like the opposite. I'm going to show everything. My buddy's like, dude, those are those, you know, those are those where you turn back and go to replay and you press delete. I'm like, no, I'm the opposite, man. I want to show everybody, you know, I'm sure there's everybody is out there has missed a big buck or shot a buck and thought oh, it was a good yeah. hit and never found them. This is one of those things, you know, if I wouldn't have filmed this, all I have is a story to tell, and that doesn't reach as many people as if I filmed it, you know, so it was a, it was a crazy experience, first time I've ever missed two deer in a row in, in uh, about 10 minutes, it was, I'm, I'm very thankful and happy it was clean misses, but it was definitely a, one of them things, man, you, you know, you shoot before season, and then people just put their bow in their truck and they just start traveling and hunting and you never think to like well at least myself I never think to shoot 15 20 times before every hunt but man I guess from putting my bow down every time I would put my bow down on the bed of my truck or something it would it was bouncing that that rest and I sure enough it knocked it over a little bit but um so you know that's true it was just last night before we went out this morning um we actually, my son laid his bow on the seat of the truck in the back and we're driving back and we're just talking like we usually do. And I just look up and here come these two deer out of a cornfield right in, right in the middle of the road. So I, you know, get on the brakes and stuff, didn't even pay attention to it. And naturally everything in the back, you hear everything move. It's like, all right, no big deal. Well, we go and get out and my, my son's like, dad, my bow. Well, it was just sitting on the floorboard, but right on the site. And I'm like, man, I would, and I looked at it I'm like, I don't know. That can't be good. We went out last night and ended up shooting. And realistically, he was shooting seven, eight inches off. Wow. And what what it was is I had the set screw loose because we just got done adjusting it three or four days prior. So <laughs> so we, we're out there, and it's to the point where all of a sudden we start bringing them in, bringing them in, bringing them in. Like anything else, <laughs> I'm not an archery tech guy. Yeah. Like, so I'm like, all right, so I turn this many clicks kind of clockwise and I look and I'm like, all right, now we're like a foot and a half the wrong way. I'm like, all right, wrong all right, way. way. So <laughs> I go back the I go back the other way and we get out there and my wife's like, Are you guys going to come in tonight? I'm like, I literally I literally have to go ahead and get this boat done. There's no yeah. if ands or buts about it. Like I have to. We can't go out in the morning. Like That's you know insane. what's in the air. We can't. So we finally did, but it, it's the same stuff. I and mean, we're out here with a flashlight and I got his site lit up and stuff but dude that's we, we got it that's we crazy good at 20 insane. and i'm like we're not going to try at 30 we're good at 20 you know god willing we get one at 20 if we don't we're not going to take the shot so <laughs> yeah dude that that's so insane this is twice now that we've talked and that happened to me today son yes that happened to me yesterday yesterday afternoon is when i was readjusting my bow and last night is when i shot that doe and 
it was the same with me. I have the fine, the micro tune knobs. So you basically oh loosen up the t- the set screw. Yep. And that's what I, that's what happened when I went to tighten down the set screw. That Joker was almost all the way out, and sure enough, that's exactly what happened to me too, dude. That's so insane. <laughs> I know. And I was like, my gosh, and you know, and it's it you don't think about a, it. It's like a nonchalant thing. You set your bow here, set your bow there, and like you just hunt. And that's how I was. Like I shot every day leading up to season, and then my bow just sat in my truck. I would go before work or after work, and like I never thought anything of it. And now I'm so thankful that these bucks, like. I have a few, you know, once in a lifetime Florida deer that are on camera yeah. and I am so thankful that the three times they've shown up when I wasn't there that I wasn't there cuz now that I think about it there could be one, you know, wounded out there somewhere or, you know, complete opposite, you know, gut shot and died and I didn't find them because they ran 500 yards like dude that so you look at all this stuff and Every day, whether it's hunting or spiritually or relationships, it's like it seems that everything happens the way it happens. And you look back, man, and you smile and you're like, man, if this wouldn't have happened, then I wouldn't have been here. And that's why when you think of like no regrets and oh, my past is my past, you should tell everybody what, you know, how your past was because that's why your life is the way it is. That's why you have the opportunity now to tell everybody about it why not tell them your serious struggles that you had why not tell them you know your serious valleys that you were into because that's what makes things real you know and that's obviously i guess this is that perfect uh, opportunity just to go into the first time i've ever heard this and you talked to me about it and you brought up baby faith yeah is it, so talk talk real quick about baby faith because that i told yeah, my wife was, that and she actually made a separate post i'm not sure if you saw it but she made an actual post about that and it actually hit her to, pretty hard <laughs> i was driving back from somewhere and i am by no means the billboard christian at all yeah. and i know she shouldn't but my wife reminds me of it yeah. But the weirdest things always happen. And when you look at it, it, it it's fake. It, it, you can't say it's not. You can't say, like you said, it happened for a reason, this or that. And so that's, you, you just, you know, there's so many times you stop and you take things for granted. And, you know, so I was just driving home one day and there was a podcast on and I forgot, like, who the podcast was and I need to figure it out. Yeah. But the guy was talking about, you know, people having faith and people having this, you know, having faith in God and everything else. And how do you know this, this, and well, you talk about people like not having the right faith. Like you truly, if you truly, truly, and it's hard, you know, if you truly yeah. believe in God and you know that he's going to take care of everything, no matter what, yeah. that you got to have baby faith. And it's like, when, when I'm listening to this podcast, I'm like, this guy's out of his mind. Like you're telling us to, <laughs> Hey, we got to believe more, you know, and trust him more. But then you're like, you're saying like, almost like baby steps. Like you're, you're wanting to do it like little by little. Well, but in the same podcast, you know, he's talking about jumping in, like, like, in it you have to have baby faith and it makes sense and he's it when he put it there and, and the podcast was a lot longer but yeah the way he said it i mean made it all come together that you know we have faith and you think you have faith mm-hmm. and we definitely have more faith in you know in god than you would think a baby would right. but we're always like, oh my God, what, why isn't it? You know, what? The, how come this hasn't happened yet? You know, and you need to realize that things do happen and they happen at his time. Right. Well, baby faith, he said, you have to have faith, not necessarily baby faith, but like a baby. And basically, you think about when that baby's first born, it's, you know, six months, a year, year and a half, two years, three years. They don't think of where they're going to eat. They don't think what's going to happen. They... They 100% know every time they look at, you know, their parents or whatever parent figure they have, that yep. they're going to be taken care of. They rely on their parents. like 100%. 100%. And they have no worries. Right. They, they're, it's the faith that they have that they're going to eat, you know, they're their mom changed. and dad are going to take care of them, you know. Right. And it's like you have to have, if you can, you truly have to have baby faith in God if mm-hmm. you want to do it right. And I'm like... And then it made me like almost like slow the car down thinking, oh my God, I don't have the faith I should have that. You know, I thought yeah. I did, you know, right. but I'm like, no, there's times I do question. I'm like, well, why hasn't this happened? You know, and little by little, trying to live a little better and be like, you've got to have that. And it's, 
it's funny because even with people that are around you that I don't know, in my mind, I may think that they're, you know, maybe have a stronger Christian belief than me, but like I notice at times I'll see them get frustrated and then about something and I don't. And it's it's those times where okay, and this is a crazy scenario. And I've had friends at work that tell me, you know, man, aren't you nervous about this whole stuff? What's going on in the world? Aren't you nervous? Aren't Yeah. I I try not to get nervous, maybe because this is some serious stuff that's going on in the world, especially in the United States right now. Like it's never been as serious in my mind oh, yeah. than it has been right now. For sure. Yeah. But I, I find myself laughing. Yeah. You, you know, and it sounds weird, but it's like, do you, I, I mean, I guess the faith that we're asking for, we're asking for, you know, and it's not that it's right or wrong guys. I'm not saying keep doing it because, you know, we're asking for, we want to be able to hunt the greatest places in the world, millions of dollars, this and that. It's, he's not going to give it to you yeah. unless he knows you can do something good with it. Yeah. He's not going to give it to you unless you know, you know, why don't I have a bunch of money? Yet? Because he probably knows that I'm going to spend it on 50 tree stands. When he realizes <laughs> I'm only going to spend it on two and yeah. put the rest towards something, in that, maybe I'll start being financially better. Exactly. But, well, and you have to get it, get after it. I mean, people think that, you know, it's just as easy as praying and, yeah. oh, it'll happen. And it's like, dude, you have to. He he's here to guide you. He's not here he to wants you push to see you, that you're you know? going to keep moving forward because you have total faith in him that yeah. he's going to deliver. Yeah, and, and that's what's funny is baby faith. You can switch that around to like when the baby doesn't get fed or doesn't get changed. What does it do? It cries and it pleads and it keeps crying and pleading until it gets its needs met or it gets changed or it gets fed. That baby faith needs to be. I don't care if you're a you know bodybuilding huge jack dude that you know is all about itself in reality you need to be on your knees you need to be pleading for him because in reality he gave you that breath you wouldn't be yep. doing everything you're doing unless that breath was given to you and that you know we talked about that when i mentioned about you know that being the first thing when you wake up and how i completely lost that visual it's like i thought i was doing everything great by you know talking to him five six times a day well when i realized that i was talking to him starting at 11 o'clock and i've been up for six hours something needed to change there so that's that's a that baby faith thing man that definitely you know, was it's so simple like, <laughs> but like I, i've noticed a lot of people now that do get upset and don't get me wrong i am upset what's going on in this world you know yeah. and in my mind it's i get a little bit of hope when i see someone on social saying you know, and you know, it, it, it's, he's going to take care of us. Is this going to happen? But I do smile sometimes because, you know, if you're out there and you do have that baby faith, yeah. he's not going to turn around and destroy physically and emotionally you, your kids, and everything right there in front of your face. Yeah. He's yeah. not. Yeah, that's... You have to smile and realize, like, when all this evil goes on. Like, oh, aren't you guys so wrong? You well, wait to see what's coming, you know? Yeah, that's well, that's kind of what I brought up on another podcast. It's like, you know, um, we we go through all these struggles all the time, but is can you name one time in your life that you were in a struggle so bad that you didn't come out of? We're alive, right? We're here talking yeah. to each other right now. So all of these crazy things that we thought at that time was like the end and it's just like dude this how are we gonna get why were we even saying that why were we even asking those questions has he ever let us down has he ever you know not got us out of those valleys yeah some of them might have lasted a few years and you thought you know you were hoping only a few weeks but that shows the reality he always is there for you he's always going to be there for you and you just have to have faith that you know if if you're having hard times, plead that those hard times are going to, you know, not just, please, Lord, get me out of this struggle. Be specific. Those specific prayers is what God really wants. You know, if you're down $68 to pay your electric bill, if it's 68 and 23 cents, you need to pray, Lord, please send me 68 and 23. He loves the specific prayers, and that changed my life a lot when I heard that from someone a few years ago about get rid of your in general prayers and make them super specific because that's when you know the Lord and you he already knows what you're dealing with but that's his reassurance that 
you two are connecting on an even deeper level and just, Hey, keep my health good. And thank you for everything you do. Like, you know, that's it's funny you bring that up too, because that is, and I'm not everywhere in this world. I mean, we, we do some Christians or some, but we're, we're you know, we shouldn't knock one Christian or Christian, but you'll have ones that say that you don't pray enough or you don't do this enough. You don't do that. Sometimes I've been places and you, you see so much Christian and it's, and I know that I'm rough around the edges. Don't get me wrong. And he knows it more than anything, yeah. but why at times I always feel it's like my kids, when we sit there and we'll say, okay, we're going to say prayers. Okay, we have the normal blessing that we say. Right. Yeah. But here, the last three or four years, I've stopped that. And I've had other people in, you know, in the family and in those be like, kind of like, look a little different. And even my own family be like, well, oh my God, he's not saying this. He's not saying the Lord's Prayer. He's not saying. Yeah. No, I pick each one of my kids. Yeah. Like, I'll go to like, hey, Ellie. And they're like, oh man, you know, put him on the spot. <laughs> yeah. I want, sure. you, I want you to say, I want you to go ahead and bless the food, say grace tonight. Yeah. I want to hear personally. Don't, I want to hear what you're thankful about. I want you to thank God. Some things that you know that he has done. Exactly. Not that the other, and I'm not saying, and I may be wrong about that, but I do think because we, we don't know, you know, it, it, everyone, you know, I guess could be an unsure, but I, it is a sure. And I think he wants to hear what is this person? I don't want 50,000 people. Mm. all asking for the same thing like he truly well doesn't he say he knows every hair on our head yeah. do, you know what i'm saying like yeah. like he wants to talk to that person and when they say that I, I feel like that they stop and they you know they stop the jokes they stop the laughing you know how kids laugh yeah. this, that they're making it like hey i better not make this stupid like i really need to talk <laughs> about hey i really appreciate everything that happened in school this week you know yeah. you helped me through those tests and you know and, and i want to thank mom for for the meal she prepared for us tonight you know and right. i appreciate everything to me it's just a little little more personal and yeah. I, i've been hunting and i don't mean to keep going but i've even been hunting with people before and i've had people turn around and be like literally say it's like man why why, why do you bless yourself yeah, because sometimes you know I just bless myself, and I and I don't bless myself. Hey, Lord, I want a 160 inch deer to walk by. Yeah, I just want a successful trip exactly. there and back, yeah. get home safe to my children. Yeah, success when I'm whatever he feels success is, and that's yeah, that's you what know? I was just about to say. Like in our minds, like good and bad in our minds is certain for each peep each person has certain things in their mind. Like some people say, you know, Oh, Hey Lord, have help me have a great, you know, successful hunt. But what is successful in your mind versus, you know, Joey, that's 15 years old. That's on his first hunt. That's never seen a deer in a tree stand, you know, like those are, that's why specific is very, very important, man. Because, you know, I always say, Lord, I know, you know, these deer that are in front of me, um, ha help me to see every, you know, your creation come up, um, and enjoy every single bird that makes noise and every single squirrel that rattles my brain. And if it's in your will, you know, it'll be done today. And it's, it's just that, that personal in general talk versus that, you know, deep, deep, in-depth talk with him it completely it'll start transforming your brain and the way you even like you'll start thinking of random things throughout the day and you're like dang i need to stop oh, yes. and think like it changes your mindset and once again it makes your faith a lot stronger and you don't even realize it you'll naturally next thing you know you like can't wait when you go to sit down and eat to say another prayer because you want to talk to him about something super specific and it's just it's awesome, man. It's a uh, that's that's why this this podcast it's it's a definitely a unique yeah. one, and it's definitely something you know. You either hear a one hundred percent faith podcast, or you hear a one hundred percent let's talk about big bucks. And this is just transformed into you know what <laughs> I want to talk about their faith and how their career is, and let's just act like we're sitting on a tailgate and just uh, talk about it and. So far, it's it's been great. You're the first, you're the first uh, industry hunter, I guess you can say that that I had on, and um, it's 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 awesome, man. I I truly enjoy this, and I truly to love to 
you know, get some connections going. And, you know, I, I do have a feeling that we're going to be texting and oh, talking absolutely. a little bit, man, because we've, we've texted a little bit here and there, too. And um, definitely anything in Florida you want to do, which no one really ever wants to come to Florida, um, you're you're more than welcome to come out here. And I actually chased Osceola's down there two, two years ago, three years ago. Nice, nice. Where at? And, uh, what what they town? Were, uh, I flew in to Daytona, and it was about an hour drive from there. Probably north. And it's uh, it it yeah. was different. I'm used to big eastern loudmouth turkeys. Mm-hmm. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you get out there, and they just I mean they just scream. I mean I'm we're I know a lot of times you, you hear people say that easterns are the the hardest bird to kill, even though they're the loudest. They could be one of the challenging birds to kill. Well they were blessed enough to have a lot of Easterns on different places that we hunt. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so, you know, I took my son, we've killed Rios, this and that. And then I go down to kill an Osceola. I'm like, well, this is going to be like, I'm just going to go out there and just <laughs> yell and these things are going to come running. No, was I in for a surprise? Yeah. You know, we went later in the season, so we really had a work for him. Oh yeah, for sure. But you know, the guy's like, man, I really fired up today. And I'm like, man, that bird sounded off like, if they're not pulling, if they if they don't come away from that hen, you're not gonna get them, and that's that that's the hardest yeah, thing, man. It was weird. It was like, man, he he sounded off like four or five times in the last hour. He's like, isn't that crazy? I'm like, man, these birds like our easterns. They'll one bird will sound off thirty times before he leaves the roost, oh, and yeah. then when he hits the ground, it's like a, a, probably another fifty times in an hour. You yeah. know, he's looking like, what are you crazy? I'm like, no, seriously, like. But I'm like, you know, you don't ever try to guide the guy. You know, he's actually a, became a good friend of mine. It's like, this, I am not used to this, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it, it was pretty cool. Yeah, Osceola's are, they're a different, they're different, man, for sure. It's a, there's a lot of non committing with, with uh, Osceola's. And that's early season is definitely the best. Um, just because obviously late season, once they actually get with a hen, then that hen's, you know pretty dang smart and you have to basically try and beat her when it comes to calling yep. and all that stuff so yeah it's a it's definitely a different 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 vibe um man we're at 50 minutes look at that anything uh, a good conversation man. <laughs> yeah for sure um let me look at my list here we kind of handled a few of these naturally just kind of went into them um so yeah man it's a where you guys have anything special happening with Drury this year? Any exciting things that uh that we can get a scoop on yet, or what? <laughs> nothing. I mean, nothing really. As far as the, I mean, everyone's moving forward. The season's rocking and rolling now. Um, Mark killed another two hundred inch, which I'm sure everyone's seen that. Oh it's, yeah. I mean, he truly, he, he's the, the guy who truly does think. Like he thinks like a deer. He's <laughs> he's one of. I mean, he's. Hey, well, that's why there's that that, that uh. That Drury app, huh? That that Deercast app. Yeah. Man, if you if so, you get it for like I, it's it's yeah, you know, I just paid my last subscription. It was nineteen nineteen ninety nine for one year. And that's the mega app, like the one with everything on it. Yeah. And you talk here you talk about again like everything's on, you know, outdoor channel, sportsman channel, you know, those are the two biggest channels out now. Yeah. But this app there yeah. you go. Everything is going to social media. Everything is going to apps, you know. Like, Drew's will always be rocking and rolling, you know, and so will the, you know, Bone Collectors and Eichler oh, yeah. and all of them on, on the whole, you know, TV side of it. But you can watch these hunts right there, you know, on this app. Right. You know, that, and it's, I mean, if you got it just for, I mean, you couldn't, for $19, not only does it have thir- the last 30 years of all Mossy Oak and Drew shows ever put out. But, I mean, it, it does have the deer cast itself, which is, you know, it shows you the pressure. And it's not just, hey, it's cold today, the moon. I mean, they truly break down what you should do and how you should hunt. and it, It's more than accurate. I mean, naturally, it, it doesn't call for the yeah. the man-made stuff, like someone lets their dog out and take, you know, the sh- chase a little deer <laughs> off your property that day. I mean, right. that's not going to do anything. But if, if the one thing I like about it, and... Like I say, by no means, I just was blessed with a crazy opportunity and I'm trying to make the best of it. So I am not one of these, you know, legend hunters out there. That deer cache track has saved me so many times. Yeah, You literally pinpoint where you hit your deer 
And I, we're talking, if you do exactly what it says, if it tells you wait mm-hmm. three to five hours, wait six to eight hours, yeah. and you just walk in and you're like, well, okay, the app's saying wait three to five hours. I'm going to take it 100 yards. As soon as I start running out of blood, I'm going to mark it, come back three to five hours. Right. If you walk the 100 yards, you may not ever find that deer. Do yeah. what the app says. And I'm yeah. telling you, 90% of the time, if you go back at that time, that deer is going to be there. It's. Right. But look how many people on the juries over the last 30 years have harvested deer. They've got every possible shot that you can imagine. Right. If you shot a deer, you put the cursor there, they will have seven or eight videos separate hunts mm. with deer hitting that same exact spot they will break down those hunts break down the time how far it went it's unbelievable that alone awesome. to have it is worth it right there yeah. yeah for sure yeah i uh i noticed they used the on they uh i saw an episode where they did use onyx also do they use both or is it now what you guys use is not no no they they had the the onyx and stuff but now the app itself is a whole separate thing from it gotcha yeah yeah you know down the line I mean, if they're gonna put it to, you know something stuff. but as of now yeah they're still teamed up with because i like the onyx up to being able to truly break things down on yeah. who's got this ground and who's this and where am i getting and, you know that that helps it helps for the whole just knocking on the door you know what i'm saying yeah, and sure. figuring out you know, property owners, or especially when you start to, if you're going to do do it yourself hunts and you're going to get oh, out yeah. west and you're going to try places, it's you'd be amazed on. Yeah, everyone does say it. Maybe there's like that on the east coast and down south, but yeah, you go out west, especially going to turkey hunting, you'd be amazed on how many people knocking on doors would be like, absolutely, there's no one here for the next three days. Go chase them birds. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I use Onyx. I use Onyx a lot too. I use. I use the jury app too to for uh, windage and all that stuff. Um, yeah, because I, I use it more for watching videos and keeping the kids like entertained in the blind. So yeah, yeah, for sure. So this is this was a this was a great conversation, man. So it was basically the same forty minute conversation we had with a little spin and some different yeah. different things to talk about and stuff and. Uh, that was that was a uh, that was good though. We're hitting hitting fifty six minutes and um that was uh i appreciate you coming on man and and taking no, the I appreciate time and, you having me and i would love love to do this again i mean yeah for sure just keeping it real and just talking about like real life stuff in general you know yeah. everything's not like you see on tv i mean it's uh, you know we're we're all the same so like we, we cannot forget that so yeah yeah that's um that's like i said at the beginning of this man that's all i'm trying to trying to make this out to be is just that real talk but that real talk that a lot of people you know they would rather choose to talk about hunting deer but i do want to just reassure everybody that you know the reason you're doing this is because of god so let's talk a little bit about that you know but it's um i'm, I'm sure i'm gonna end up having some guys on that uh, I try and give you guys a heads up a little bit that, hey, we're going to be talking about faith. You comfortable with all that? But normally a personal conversation, I will kind of know if I want to have you on or not because yeah. I don't want, you know, that's a whole nother podcast to get like an atheist hunter on or something like that, which I don't even yeah. know if there are any, but that, the killers, I guess you can call them and not the hunters. But um, yeah, that would be a whole different subject. And I don't even know. I don't even have the the biblical knowledge to even come up against that stuff but you, uh, <laughs> n- and not to end it on that yeah but this is it, it's funny you say because like i said I, i've had a several people that have, i'll be out hunting with filming and i had a, that buddy one time when i was saying i blessed myself you know yeah and he said uh and maybe i answered it wrong i don't know because like I, said, I don't have the knowledge either to, exactly yeah. to challenge that but i i do know and i do believe and i do have faith and yeah his, so you know he made the comment he's like well you bless yourself this or that he's like you know what, dude? He's like, he goes, you know, because everybody out there, they don't want to do this. They don't want to drink. And, and, I, and I, I I, still have a few drinks, you know. Yeah. Every, and I'm not saying every night, you know, like maybe a couple times a month. So it's not like I, you know, and if you read it and you, you, you read the Bible, you read stuff like that. I mean, it does, it does, it's not. Moderation you know, and stuff. Yeah. And some people take, take things. It's all on how you read it. But honestly, it is what it is. So we, we all hope that we're interpreting it the yeah. right way what's in that bible is what's in that bible so you hope right. you interpret it right you try to do the best but i told him he's like you know what's gonna happen he goes what happens if you do all that praying this or that and nothing works out for you this or that and you try to do everything good 
He goes, and then you end up dying and you're in the dirt. He yeah. goes, guess what? You're not going to remember it because you're in the dirt. And he's laughing. Yeah. I'm laughing. And I'm like, dude, why you got to be like that? You know? And yeah. I'm like, I said, let, let's just listen to it this way. And he's like, okay, let's hear this. You know? So he's like, go, you go ahead and take somebody that has faith and believes and knows. And you take somebody that doesn't know, maybe has faith. He's like, oh, I know. I'm here to tell you. There's no way that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And a, and a man can walk on water. And I go, oh, that's fine. I said, but. You live, and, and it makes you upset when people believe this. But, you know, we're still friends. You know what I'm saying? We get yeah. along good. We're, we, we, you know, we have a lot of all the beliefs. And it's, I said, you live your life getting mad at this is right, or mad about this, mad about this. And you, you get all the way to the end of your life, and you did all these things. And you said you lived good, but you, you had fun. You did what you want. You know, you, you did all these crazy sins, which we all sin. But you did it knowing, like, I don't have to worry about this, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and you're mad about the people that screwed you over this or that and you pissed at them and then you have the christian that treated everybody right lived right did you know smiled mm -hmm. seen the worst times ever like you said the worst things he always pulled out of them yeah. and doesn't regret from it this or that you all you get to the end you're sitting there at no pearly gates i told him i said let's just say you're right mm -hmm. you're sitting there and you both look at each other you're grit and say i told you you're right and the Christian's looking back at you, smiling, saying, you're right. But he's happy. I go, yeah. what do you have to lose? Yeah. I said, you honestly going to play the long shot? Yeah. Well, like, are you really? But it's hard to say that because then you're telling him, well, you don't have to believe. Just live like a Christian. But really, you got to believe, you yeah. know. But I was just trying to show him that, that you're living a happier life. And at the end, man, what do you have to lose? I mean, yeah, what, I you don't look like idiots. For sure. I'd rather I'd rather believe I'd rather believe and live a you know faithful life and a grateful life and uh, you know a life full of positivity and when it comes to you know the end of my time um, eternity in hell is a long time so I'd rather live my life on earth um, you know the way I'm doing it now and uh, have hope rather than get to the end of my life. You know, knowing that I'm just going, oh, wherever, you know, I'd rather have that hope and that and that feeling that I'm going to a bigger and better place. Um, but, yeah, there's a big billboard by my parents house over in the Inverness area. And it's been there since I can remember coming to Florida. And I'm talking since I was two years old, I was coming to Florida. And it said eternity in hell is a long time. And it was a really big white billboard with black letters, and it's right on the side of the highway. And that's, like, ingrained in my head, and it's 100% true. So that's uh, yeah. that's it's crazy. But all right, man. Well, I'll, uh, man, it's 10, 15, 10, 19. Been a, been a good podcast. I appreciate uh, appreciate you coming on, like I said again. Absolutely. Um, Let's definitely do this again and stay in touch. So. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to say a quick prayer, and then we'll get out of here. All right, you got it. Dear Lord, thank you so much for uh, this fellowship. Thank you, Lord, for this connections. Um, thank you for everything you do in our lives, Lord. Please forgive us of our sins. Continue to guide us towards you, Lord. Continue to make our minds wiser towards you, Lord. And uh, give us the right words to say when it comes to difficult people. Uh, Lord, continue to um, watch over uh, these guys in the industry as they travel throughout the season this year, Lord, and please bless them with with, uh, with some good content and some good memories that they can show their families and, uh, you know, laugh about some great stories that you've provided with your creation, Lord. Thank you so much for uh, Sean, and um, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, bro. You take right. care of you and your family. Have a good week. You too, brother. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. You got it. Take care. Bye-bye.